What's going on guys, it's Matt from Adventures and I'm here with El on the Marconi Express going from Bologna Airport to Bologna City Center. We've got just five hours to do as much as we can before we have to catch our next flight which is going to Kiev in Ukraine and we thought we could just use the time to explore the city, especially through food because as we all know, food and Italy are just one amazing combination and we want to try as much as we possibly can. That's it, we just got off the monorail to the center of Bologna. It only took us eight minutes from the airport now we're here, we have about 50 minutes till the restaurant we want to eat at opens up. It is Osteria del Orso. It's about 20 minute walk away. On the way there, there's a park, there's some geocaches. We're gonna look at that and just if we have extra time, we're gonna explore the city center just a little bit. But the priority is food because when you're in Italy, you must eat like the Italians. first 10 minutes we've already found one geocache and now there's another about 15 minute walk to where we need to be. I think we should go check out that fortress first since it's right next to us and then we'll keep on making a move towards the center. geocache we're gonna find is part of a series called um, Bologna crimes which is real crimes that happened around Bologna and the caches are hidden in places significant to the crime so that's pretty cool let's find the first one somewhere here okay okay What I realized is there's a lot of this place we haven't seen before. We've been just for 24 hours as a layover in the past and now we're walking through this really colorful street full of graffiti and just colors and artwork everywhere. There was a grungy style bar as well and it's all covered in these nice old classic style arches which is just really pleasant to walk through. It's like you're in a totally different world as well and I know that with every step we're getting closer to food. As you can hear by the bells, it's 12 o'clock and we were just a little bit early for our restaurant. It opens at 12.15. So we came over here to the main church in the city center. You can see the entrance right behind me. And if you look down this road, you'll see just how far this thing stretches for. It's, it's pretty long. So we're gonna just check out the sites over here, look at the city center a little bit, and then try head back for lunch just in time for the opening because we really are on a tight schedule. Okay, one thing you need to know about us is that we are pigs and really like we just love to eat. So even though we're going to lunch right now, that is not going to stop us from getting a slice of pizza, which is kind of like a, a Roman variation of pizza from a shop we passed by on the way here, which looks really, really good. And that's going to be our appetizer before going for a full feast. Okay. Oh yeah, now try a bite and tell me what it's like. Okay. One interesting thing about this pinsa, apart from the fact that it's pretty pretty tasty, is that it's not something we would normally choose. In fact, I just went into the restaurant and asked the server what her favorite one was and she pointed out two. So we said, you know, give us a small piece of each. This one is sausage and broccoli and the other one was like a radicchio and maybe a brie cheese. It was really nice. They both had really intense flavors and the dough is nice and crispy, which is what you'd expect from a pizza when compared to especially something like a Neapolitan pizza, which is more floppy. This is so good. We passed by before and now we arrived just as they said the restaurant opens. It's 16 minutes past. They said it opens at quarter past and there's already a queue and a lot of people outside. Um, as I said, Google said this is one of the best places to eat around here. So you would expect it to be full, but hopefully we can get ourselves a table.
got two really simple dishes here. There is the tortellini in brodo, which is just a simple chicken broth with tortellini inside. And then there's the lasagna. Everyone knows classic lasagna with the bolognese sauce. Of course, bolognese, bologna. But this, this lasagna is green lasagna, so it's got spinach used in the pasta itself, which just gives it an extra little kick. And to finish up our meal, the Italian classic, tiramisu. Creamy, slightly coffee. Yeah. Uh, I am absolutely stuffed, guys, and lunch was really good. It wasn't cheap, it was about like 42 euro for both of us, but it was absolutely delicious. We had a starter and a main course as well. And now we've got about three hours before our flight. That means one hour before we have to get to the airport because obviously you do want to be there two hours before, especially now there are extra security checks and all that. So we want to be safe and get there about two hours before departure. So we have one more stop before we go. We need to get some gelato. Now yeah, we just had dessert. We had a really, really good tiramisu. But according to my maps, there is a gelato place just around the corner from here. It's meant to be like rated 4.7 stars, which is you know, absolutely great. So let's go try find that one, have a scoop of gelato, and then start making our way back to the plane. I am absolutely stuffed. But you can't leave Italy without having a gelato. This is Cremeria Mascarella, and apparently, according to Google again, it is one of the best places to get gelato over here. So I'm gonna go inside and get a single scoop of stracciatella. Ah, I don't know if I'm gonna have anywhere to fit it, but I want it. That is really nice of them. I wasn't so hungry, so she gave me a half portion. It wasn't even on the menu, but she charged me half the price and gave me a little tiny single scoop of ice cream. And uh, let's let's give it a taste. Mm, so creamy. So creamy. Well, you have to try this. Pretty good. <laughs> Last lick of the ice cream. We've got about two hours and 45 minutes before our flight. Now it's about a 45 minute uh, public transport ride back to the airport, including the walk and everything, which gives us just enough time to catch the flight. Of course, we have a little bit of leeway. We arrive like one and a half hours before, it's not gonna make a huge difference. But I think now we're gonna find some water and start making our way back. It's something like, even though we're in the middle of a city, there's something cool about just being surrounded by trees. Like it's a park and behind us there are buildings, but this way, it's all green. And I don't know. I wish we had a few more places like this in Malta where you could just walk a few meters away from the buildings and just be completely then away from it all. One more awesome thing about this Italian public transport system is how easy it is to pay. All you have to do is walk up to the machine with any contactless card, tap, and you're good, so you don't have to have a public transport card specific to the place and you don't have to waste any time once you get here, you just go and tap the card that's already in your wallet no needing to go and buy something from before or anything like that, just go, tap and you're good That's it for our five hours in Bologna. We made it to the airport in really good time, so we've been just chilling here. Our flight's about to start boarding, and we are, you know, just chilling. We're not in a rush or anything, but we didn't waste time either. Found that perfect balance. Got to do just enough stuff to make the stopover totally worth it. Just a quick rundown, basically, we got onto the... Just a quick rundown, we basically got onto the monorail, went into the city center, walked around and explored there just a little bit, then got some food. We actually got food from three different places. First we got some pinza, then we went to an osteria for a full-blown Italian meal, and then we stopped for obviously gelato on the way back. Now we're here at the airport, and I guess that also proves to you that you don't really need, you know, too much time. You can make a fun adventure even when you're pressed, but it's always worth it to go out, do the things that's a bit more difficult. We could have just stayed here in the airport for like five hours, but that would have been a really boring five hours. Instead, no, we chose to do something different. We chose to go out and try something new, and it worked out really, really well.
thanks for watching now we're on the way to kiev that's our stuff over before going to georgia and until then i'll see you in the next one